This Debian VM was installed using a PXE boot image and a TFTP server. In this video, let's take a look at how we got that all set up and working. All right, so here at our Proxmox web interface, we're going to start out this setup by setting up two separate containers. I've been following some of the best practices that I learned from Docker and applying them to LXC. Now, I don't really know if they're LXC best practices, but I've found that I've had better experiences setting up one individual application in each container and keeping a container more as an application unit than trying to shove all the software needed into a single container to make something work. I'm gonna continue on with that process, but know that you can set up all of this software, that both the DHCP server and the TFTP server in one container if you'd like to do that. But I'm gonna start out here making the containers that I need. So I'm just gonna go up to create container and I'm gonna give it the name for the first one. We're gonna be using VLAN 80 here today. So you're gonna see some of my configuration set up for that. You don't have to use VLAN 80. You don't even have to use a VLAN if you want. But the way my home lab's configured with a lot of my stuff piped in from my main house router, I wanna make sure I'm off on a separate VLAN and kind of have my own network to do what I want. So I'm just labeling this 80 and I'm gonna call it DHCP server and give it a password. My template that I'm gonna to choose to use is our latest LTS version of Ubuntu. Disk, eight gigs, CPU one, memory 512, network. I'm choosing my bridge that's gonna be attached to um, VLAN 80. And again, we're gonna do static for my server. I'm going to assign this an IP address of 192.168.80 and two, and it's gonna be a slash 24 network which will configure all of this inside of this server. And my gateway is gonna be 192.168.80 and one. Now I've gone ahead and set up my router gateway and everything that's gonna be controlling this. Um, that is entirely just what I want to do myself. And you can set up yours however you want as long as you're gonna get an internet connection and it's in the same IP range. We can leave our domain name so we can hit next. And yeah, I have a ID number wrong here. I wanna put this in the 300 range. And I'm doing this more for myself just to keep everything configured and organized. All right, so there we go. We have our container and let's go ahead and hit start and the console and we'll blow this console up for you. I'm gonna log in with root. APT update and and trade dash y and this is going to install all our updates. We'll be back shortly when this finishes. So now that our updates are finished, we're going to go ahead and close this console image and shut this container down. Now we're going to right click on it and go to clone, give this an ID number. And again, you don't need to change the ID number if you don't want. I'm doing it for organization and I'm going to give this a new name and I'll hit clone. This is going to give us an exact copy of our image that we set up before. So we don't have to install any of the updates or anything. It's going to be updated and ready to go. Now that that clone's finished, we're just going to jump into network and we're going to select the ETH0 network adapter, hit edit. And over here where the IP address says 82, we're just gonna change that to 83 and press OK. Now we can go ahead and fire up our DHCP server and open the console again. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is install the software that we're gonna be using to create the DHCP server. And today we're gonna to be using ISC DHCP server. So that's what we'll install. With the DHCP server installed, we're gonna to have to do some configuration using Nano. And we're going to be editing a file at etc DHCP dhcpd.config. In this file, we're going to go ahead and change the domain name server. And I'm going to point mine at one dot and Google. So the first IP address I'm gonna enter is one dots. And then I'm gonna separate them by a comma and a space. And I'm gonna enter. 
Google's DNS server. Now, these are entirely up to you. You can use whatever you want. You can use one dot's primary and secondary instead of using one dot in Google's primary. That's entirely up to you and how you want to do it. Now I'm going to scroll further down through this file and I'm going to make this server authoritative. It is the only DHCP server on this particular network, in my case in VLAN. And once we get down here to this file, I like to make a, lot, a little bit of space and I'm going to copy in the entire file. You can go ahead and edit this if you would like. Uh, actually, let's do it that way. So we can just remove our comments. So we're setting the IP range that we want and we're going for a slash 22 network as I mentioned in our container setup. So we're going to put the subnet as 192, 168, 80, and 0. And we're going to change the subnet mask to 255, 255, 255, 0. This will give us an IP range of 0 to 255, of course, 0 being dropped and 255 being dropped. Now we're going to set in our IP range here that we want to assign addresses. I'm going to give us 100 addresses. And I'm setting this a little ways off of zero. That way I know my first 100 IP addresses can be static. Now we're gonna enter our, our router IP address, which in our case is gonna be the IP address of our NAT. The next thing we need to enter here is a line called next server. And the IP address given after the next server tag is gonna represent the IP address of our TFTP server or the server that our boot device is going to communicate with in order to load its image to begin the installation of Debian. We also need to tell the device what file to load and we're going to do that here with this option line that I'm adding right now. So option boot file dash name and we're going to specify PXE Linux dot zero. You can't change that. That file has to stay that. It's going to be part of the files we're going to download with the Debian netboot image later on as we set up our TFTP server. All right, so all of the configuration in this file is done, so we can press Control X and Y, enter, and save that. Now we're going to use Nano to edit one more file, and what this file is going to do is allow us to tell ISC DHCP server what interface we want to listen on and assign IP addresses over. And we're using IPv4, so we're going to edit this line and we're going to tell it ETH0. Press Control X, Y, and Enter. All right, so now we can go ahead and start up our ISC server with sysctl start isc dhcp server. And we're also going to go ahead and run enable. This is going to make sure that it boots up every single time that we reboot this container. And we can go ahead and also run status. And this is just going to make sure that it is indeed booted and active. It's kind of just a good practice. If you entered something wrong in one of these files or something, it may not boot up and it may not even give you an error message. So by running a status, we can check that it's active and running. So now that we have this particular server up and running, we can go ahead and close out the container and we can move on to setting up our TFTP server right here. And again, we need to start it and open the console. And we're gonna start out this installation by installing our TFTP server. And we're gonna do that with an apt install TFTPD dash HPA. And you notice I added a dash Y just to answer that question, yes. All right, so now that we have our server, we need to go off and grab our Debian netboot files. And I'm gonna use wget to do that. Now, um, I had to spend a little bit of time searching and I'll go ahead and provide this link to you in the description. You can notice it's bullseye, but this is the image that you're gonna need to unpack in order to use 
this file. All right, so now that we have our file downloaded, we can run ls and we get to see our file. Now we need to unpack this file. So we can run tar-xf and our file name. Now, since we're in a nice console image, I'm able to copy and paste this. So that's what I'm going to do. Now running ls, you can see that's been unpacked into multiple files. So now that we have those files unpacked, I'm just going to use the cp command. And I noticed that I have a dash r for recursive. And I'm going to move all of those files other than the image file, the tar that we downloaded, over to SVR TFTP, which was created during the installation process of the TFTP server. And then right behind that, I'm going to use the CD command to move to that directory. And I like to run an LS, make sure they're all there. Now, if you are using UEFI to boot, it's a good idea to link these two particular files that are inside of the Debian installer to this installation. And we're gonna do that with the ln-s and the file path. And now we're also going to link Grubbin the same way. And we're gonna restart TFTP server. All right, and just like we did before, I like to go ahead and check the status <coughs> and see that it's running. All right, so now if we have any luck, we should be able to close out of this window and create a new VM. We'll just call this test video. We're not gonna use any media because again, we're gonna be booting off the network. Our system can all stay the same. Our disks can stay the same. CPU, I think Debian likes two cores. Two gigs of RAM is enough. Network, again, I'm on that VLAN 80, which is tied to VMBR3. Next and finish. Okay, so now that we have the VM created, we can go ahead and hit start and console. You can see that we're connecting through network boot. We've discovered the IP address. And there we go, we're booted up and we're ready to do the installation of Debian 11. So hit install, you'll notice we'll boot up and we're ready to install. I hope you enjoyed today's video and now are able to install Debian through a netboot server. As always, have a good night. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing.